Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. Today we are going to be going over some inventory evaluation methods and in this video particularly periodic FIFO. Now the important thing to keep in mind is that the whole point of inventory evaluation is to determine which costs are going where. For example, if all of our costs stayed at $5 each, if every time we purchased units it was always $5 each, it would be simple. We wouldn't have to do any of these different types of methods. However, typically in a real market, prices change. So we have to determine, well, which units at which prices were actually sold. So let's start taking a look at the data we have available. We have a series of beginning inventory and purchases throughout the period. So at the beginning of the year, they had 60 units at $5 each. They made a purchase of 100 units at $6 each, 50 units at $8, 30 units at $9, so on and so forth. So as you can see, this is a period of rising prices. So if I said, oh, we sold 100 units during the period, you couldn't just flat out say, okay, well, they were at eight bucks. You have to actually in analyze and to choose what method you want to use in order to determine the cost of those goods that were sold. So in this case, we are going using periodic FIFO. So periodic indicates that we make our updates at the very end of the period. So here it's telling us that a physical count of the inventory indicated that 50 units were still on hand. And we know that it is FIFO. So that is going to be first ones in will be the first ones out. Um, another way of saying that is the first ones that we purchased are going to be the first ones we consider sold. So let's start analyzing this data and taking a look at what the cost of the goods sold will be and the cost of the ending inventory will be. So I am going to lead with the information that is provided down here. So they tell us that 50 units were still on hand at the end of the period. So if the first ones purchased, the first ones in, are the first ones sold, where will our units that are still on hand be, the units that we did not sell? Well, the units that we did not sell will be at the bottom then because we're considering first ones in, first ones sold. So sold, 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 and then the ones that are remaining are going to be at the bottom. So let's start finding out the cost of those 50 units here in the sending inventory section. So we see here that we have 30 units at $9 each. Now we need to account for 50 units. So since there's only 30 units here though, that's going to be the first step. So we put 30 units at $9 each. Now are we done accounting for those ending inventory items? No, there's still some more. We still need 20 more units. We've only accounted for 30 of them. So since these are all gone, let's go up to the next level and let's start accounting for those as well. So now from this level, we need to grab the 20 additional units that we need to get our 50 units that are remaining. So let's put down our 20 units. And that is at $8 each. So now that we've grabbed 20 units from right here, well, where did the uh, additional 30 units from this row go? Well, if they are on hand at the end of the period, then they are considered cost of goods sold. So let's start finding our cost of goods sold as well. We have 20 units from this layer down there. So let's put the additional 30 right up here, 30 units at $8 each. Great. Now let's keep moving up. Do we have any more ending inventory that we have to account for? Nope. They are all gone. So all of these 100 units were sold at $6 each. Okay. And the same thing for that beginning inventory. We don't have any more um, ending inventory to account for at the end of the year. So the beginning inventory for the year, those are all sold as well. That would be 60 units at $5 each. Okay, now our, ne our last step here is to, is to determine exactly how much this totals out to. So we have 30 units at $8 each, 100 units at $6 each, and 60 units at $5 each. So in total, that gives us $1,140 in our cost of goods sold. So now let's take a look at that next one as well. We have 30 units 
at $9 each. So let's multiply those to see what the total is, $270. And we do the second one as well. So we have $430 in our ending inventory at the end of the period. So keep in mind also a really cool way to check your work as you go. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. Um, if you take all of your units, you multiply them by the cost for each layer, and then you add those up. You'll notice that the total there is $1,570. And if you were just to kind of check your work, 1140 plus 430, that gives you the $1,570. So essentially, all of these costs, what we are determining, how much of this $1,570 is cost of goods sold, and how much of that $1,570 is ending inventory. That is the whole goal here. So let's take a look in our next video at Periodic LIFO, and then we'll see how it switches things up a little. In the meantime, happy studying.